Hello. Hey, I'm looking for Carter. Uh, who's calling? My name is Johnny. I was actually calling about the property on K Circle. I know what's going on with the house, and I just have a few options that can help you get the bank off the back if you're, if you're interested. Okay, you're going to have to speak up just a little bit. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, I was, yes. I was just saying, I was calling about the property on K. And I have a few uh -huh. options that can help you out and try to get the bank off the off your back if you're interested. Okay, what options have you got? So it really just depends on what you what you want to do. Uh, I have eight uh, options that I like to go through. Are you trying to stay in the house? Yes. Okay. So have you done a loan modification? Apparently, apparently it's been done. Um. And it can't be redone. Have you, you you did it before? Is is what they're saying? I'm the daughter-in-law. Okay. But I'm on the property part of it as well, apparently, because I got served too. Okay. Um, but I think that they have done a modification. They let my husband's stepbrother live here for a while. And um, I think that's where everything got screwed up. Ah, okay. Sounds like a messy situation. How did you get wrapped in there? Because my in-laws, they, honestly, they both have passed. Oh, so this property was left to you? To my husband, yes. Uh, okay. And you guys want to keep it in the family, obviously. Well, we moved in it three months ago. So moved back, uh, you know, moved in it, and then all of a sudden this all happened when we didn't didn't have oh, a clue. Wow. Cause oh wow, okay, um, okay. So the modification has been. Have you guys spoken to the mortgage company? Do you guys have access to the account? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I just wanted to make get that out of the way and make sure. Have you thought about doing a personal loan where, you know, a family member or a friend would pay to catch up the arrears and you would just pay them back? Have you thought about that? I don't have anybody that I could borrow $8,000 from right now. Yeah. Okay. That's usually never a good option, but it is an option. I just wanted to make you aware of that. So yeah. Um, I've, I've reached out, but under the circumstances and... Yeah. Us, you know, just trusting in his step brother that it would be, yeah. you know, and we got screwed over royally on a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. So I mean, it's just eight thousand dollars. It don't sound like a whole lot, but it's a lot when you don't have it. Yeah, I no, that's that's a lot of money. Any anything that surpasses what you feel comfortable with is a lot of money, no matter the amount. That that's first and foremost. Um, if I could borrow it, I'd go do it today and pay it back in you know in the next couple of months, yeah, three months, yeah. whatever like that. But I I don't know of anybody, and absolutely. I mean, have you thought about filing bankruptcy? If we file bankruptcy, then we would lose other things, and then we would lose this house anyway because it's not deeded to us as yet. Oh, so it's not even deeded. Are you guys in the probate process right now to get it deeded to you? Uh, well, it's, uh, Mr. Hampton, he left everything to my husband in his will, okay. and there was no other children involved. Okay. okay. So I mean, we didn't have to probate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the, the three things that, I, that we just spoke about there's eight options in total when somebody's facing for closure. The three that I gave you are the three best ways to stay in the house. Um, uh -huh. Other options moving forward would be you selling the house and moving forward. Is that something that you you thought about? No, no. We um, we have another home that we just sold to my daughter. And we just, you know, thinking that this home was just a few bucks still owed on it, yada, 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 would be yeah. fine. So that's already been done. 
Okay. And you said so, you, sold, you sold that other house. When did you sell it? For what was owed on it. That was it. We just, you know, basically just oh, flipped okay. names. Oh, okay. Because my daughter, son-in-law, and grandkids. Because okay. we thought, well, we had this one. We didn't have to worry about it. Now mm-hmm. this one, because nobody called us, nobody notified us how I found out yeah, about it. Uh, it was the mailman. you got to love these mortgage companies. He's trying to take advantage of us. They don't tell us anything, and then all of a sudden we're months into the process of a foreclosure, and we only have a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. What, what, what date is the foreclosure? April 11th. Oh, so it's coming up soon. Yeah. You know, I want to help you out. In a perfect world, what what happens? What what do you like? What do you see? What do you envision happening in this situation? Uh, if I can borrow the eight thousand dollars to pay it back to get it back on keel, and then um, get it registered into our name, because we've already got the the property in our name, not the mortgage. Yeah. Okay. Um. Have you reached out to uh, to any private money lenders in the area to see if they're willing? To no, because we just found this out four days ago, five days ago. Okay. So what, when we get off the phone, what is your plan? Because you don't want to sell sell your house. No. But what? I'd be you, homeless then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's not that's not a good option. So what? Well, can you tell me if I go to a bank or if I go to a mortgage lender? And I tell them that it's seven thousand dollars behind. We were deed- we were uh, we inherited the house. What can we do now? There's, it's only eighty five thousand dollars is what the payoff is on this house, and the house is worth about two fifty. So you might is a be, bank. You might be able to refinance. Right? So is a bank going to let us do that with it being behind? It really just depends. It depends on a couple of things, like your um, your credit score, obviously, uh, your income, and your reputation with that bank. So if you go to a new bank and be like, hey, this property just got left to us in a will, it, would have a mor- it was behind on the mortgage, we don't have the money to catch it up, is there any way we can refinance it? Because it's already been deeded to us. I mean, the worst I can say is no, and then we can move forward. But I would just suggest picking up the phone and and talking to as many people as you can to try to get this rectified. Because you only have a couple of days. And and I I know doing a refinance, working with the bank, you have to do a lot of paperwork. I don't know if you'll be able to get that in time. Then what else do I do? You know, I, you know, I don't want to say this, but what, what is your name, Miss? Tina. Tina. Mhm. Tina, I'm, my name is Johnny Stewart. Tina, I'm gonna be bluntly honest with you. If if that doesn't work, then you either sell the house or the house forecloses and a sheriff knocks on your door in thirty days. That that's just the brutal truth. Oh, I know. Know. I mean, I've called and talked to. But, you know, it, I just don't know what else to do. I've never been in this situation, never been this, you know, f- I hate to say it, uh, financially, we're fine until this happened. Yeah. If, 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 like, how much, you said you'd be homeless if you sold it. If you sold it, how much would you need to walk away and, you know, start a new life? A million dollars, you know, but I mean, <laughs> I, I, um, I would like that too. Trust me. You know, I mean, being just honest with you, I, um, I don't want to walk away from it. I'm, yeah. I, I'm finally, of all things in this world, content. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's most important. And. I have physical disabilities, and this house has no stairs, just a couple of steps up into the the front porch, you know. that That's easy. Um, it's all one level. Yeah, yeah. And then going through all of my... 
surgeries and things. It's just, you know, I felt at ease here. I've got wonderful neighbors. Yeah. The most wonderful neighbors that you've ever met in your life. I wow. didn't have that at the other house that we lived there for 20 years. And, yeah. Yeah. See, I completely understand. And I know being being in a place that you can really feel comfortable with, that's number one on the list when you're looking for a house. So that's number one. You want to feel comfortable. And I'm glad you do. Tina, I don't want to say that, you know, you you only have one option because you don't. You just have to get on the phone and talk to talk to some people and see what they're willing to do. It, it's no, ma'am. It's hard because it's the foreclosure date's just a couple weeks away. Right. So, you know, as soon as I get off the phone, you ha- you got to call around and see what people are. Who would I start with? with? Have you have you ever taken out a mortgage before? Um, yeah, 25 years ago. Was it the one on the other house that you just got paid off? Oh, we paid it off six or seven years ago. So do you remember who the lender was on that? Yeah, it was Associates and then Citibank. I would give them a call. Oh, had, no. Yeah, you know, I took out a mortgage. No. Got, you said no? You had a bad experience with them? Mm, yeah, they were horrible. Oh wow! I mean, I don't, I don't want to steer you in the wrong way because I'm not a mortgage lender, so I, I'm not sure who the best option is. So you just an investor, a buyer? Yeah, I'm an investor. So I would, I would just buy your property in cash. But you, you're not, you're not looking to move, so you know, you, you got to call around to these mortgage companies and see what they're willing to do. Would you, would you be willing to do a situation where? I purchased the house and allowed you to rent it back. If all that no. fails, no, okay. No, because it, like I said, it's only eighty two, eighty three thousand, eighty five left on it. You know, and that's basically nothing in this market. Yeah. Well, Tina, as soon as we get off the phone, you got to call around. Um, I would just, I would just call your your the the a, a bank near you. A more, I would just type in, hey, mortgage lender in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and see what comes up. And just start calling around and tell them exactly your situation and what hap- what what's happening. The only way that I can rectify this issue is by purchasing your house, but that's not what you want to do. So I I want to help you do what's best for you. You could loan me the eight thousand dollars and I'd pay it back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I, I wish I was a lender because I, I would do that because I like helping people. I'm just not a lender. That's not my business model. And I did that one time and it bit me in the butt. So I told myself I would never do it again. I let I let my niceness get in the way sometimes. I understand. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's happened here with me and my husband. Okay, it's all right. You know, if he'd have told us when he was one month late. Yeah. Not seven months, six months, yeah. whatever it is. Exactly. Well, Tina, listen, I'm going to keep, this is your cell phone number? Uh, no, this is our home line, landline. Is, is this the best way to reach you, or can I get your cell phone? This is the best way to reach me most days is it landline when I'm here. Okay. Take down... Do you have a pen? Yeah, just a second. <clears throat> Where are you calling from? Do you live locally? Or? I live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So oh, okay. Two, three hours away from you. I have a few partners down there. In Chattanooga, we're looking for properties around there. So, yeah. And I and, and like I said, I like I like helping people out. So I, I saw right. what was going on. So I was like, let me reach out and let's let's see what I can do to help her. If the mailman hadn't have told us, you would have been the first one to tell me. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. No yeah. phone calls, no nothing. Wow. Yeah, because we get things in the mail all the time. Want to buy your house? Want yeah. to buy your house? Yeah. So, you know, we just throw them in the trash. Yeah. 
Yeah, of course, like anybody. But then all of a sudden the mailman says, hey, I saw your house on the foreclosure list, and I went, what? Wow, and he wasn't delivering mail, he just said it in normal conversation? Yeah, and then the next day I start getting all these from the attorneys, but, you know, wouldn't have known, not not really the... Uh, okay, I've got a pen. All right, my name is Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y, last name is Stewart, S T E. W A R T, and I'm going to give you my direct cell phone number so you can reach me anytime. It's 774 219 3450. And do you have a company name or is this just personal? So I work for my own company, it's called JS Property Investment. And like I said, I have a few investors in Chattanooga who will buy your house for cash if all else fails. But we're gonna we're gonna exhaust every option to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best because, like I said, you know, part of my healing is feeling content, Absolutely. and and I've done everything but cry and scream, so. And sometimes, hey, sometimes crying and screaming for a couple of minutes is, is what's needed. A good cry always makes you feel better. And I know that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when you wipe your nose, this problem's still there. It is. But, you know, like I said, you've got to cry for a few minutes, though. You can't let it consume your day or consume you. And sometimes you've got to let it out. And then and then wipe the, wipe your nose and keep it moving. I know this situation is far from ideal, but you know I I will hold your hand and and try to get you through this so we see see the light on the other side. All right, so you know, there's 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 not much time, especially I've de I've bought in foreclosures before, and I've stopped foreclosures on the day of. These mortgage companies are, they want to string it out, string it out, string it out. So get on the phone and try to get whoever to talk to you and see if they're willing to, to try to help you out in this situation. I'm going to give you a call tomorrow if I don't hear from you today telling me good news. I'm going to call you tomorrow and see where we're at, okay? Okay. If I don't answer, I'm in therapy, so. All right. Physical therapy, okay. What's a what's a good time for me to call you then? Um, let's see, my therapy's at ten tomorrow, and I'm there usually four hours. So any time between eight and ten in the mornings, or um, three to six. Would you rather me call you in the morning before therapy? That way, once you get back, you can relax and not have to worry about this too much. Mm, after, maybe. Okay. After is better? Yeah, because if I go in stressed, they don't like that. Great idea. Great idea. I'll give you a call then, and we'll see where we're at. Okay. Tim, thank you so much, and I wish you the best of luck on these phone calls. You have my direct number, so if anything happens today, if you need anything, if you just want to pick up the phone because you're screaming, I'll, I'll okay. pick up. Okay. All right, Tim. Thank All you right. so much, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.